I was invited by Brother Albert McLellan to talk to you about the Lausanne Congress, one of the, my main research area. I'm William Almeida de Carvalho, a Brazilian Freemason. I wa I'm watchful master of the Research Lodge of the Grand Orient, and I was associated with Quattro Coronati, Philadelphia Society, and Masonic Library and Museum Association. I was, I'm, I'm a sociologist, a master in public administration, and PhD in political science. The present works seeks to give a very brief idea about the Lausanne Congress. In the beginning, I had all the books and documents necessary for the elaboration of the work, except the Scottish Monitor, the French says two years, approved by the Lausanne Congress. I asked them via internet and had to get a copy of such monitor. I knew the Belgian masonry had one, so I made contact in the beginning of April 1996 through the internet email with brother Jacques Hugobar, who immediately made efforts to contact the Belgian Supreme Council. A week later, the information they informed me he had found the monitor, but he needed a proof that I was capable to examine the monitor because, because it brings practical in every, everything about the 33 degrees of ancient and accept Scottish right. Since there is no electronic trilogy yet, then I made contact with brother José Castellani, Grand Secretary of Culture of the Grand Orient of Brazil and of the Supreme Council, so that we could solve this problem. Brother Castellani suggests me three options. First, send a copy via fax of my last degree license of the Supreme Council of Brazil to brother Jack. Second, Castellani, as the Grand Secretary of Culture and Communication of the Supreme Council of Brazil, could send a letter to the Belgian Supreme Council confirming my aptitude. And third option, made contact with brother André Rosenthal, Secretary of International Relations of the Grand Orient of Brazil in Rio de Janeiro, to ask him to make contact with brother Yves Trestournel, Grand Secretary of Administration of the National Grand Lodge of France, Grand Lodge Nationale Française, GLNF, in Paris, to intercede on my behalf with the Belgian Supreme Council. With these three options in hand, I send a message to brother Jack, who chose the third. So I made contact with Brother Rosenthal, who gave me the telephone of the Brother Yves in Paris. The latter was happy to intercede on my behalf with the S Belgian Supreme Council. Once the problem was solved, I received from Brother Jack the fax number of Brother René Constant, 33, of the Belgian, Belgian Supreme Council to ask them to send me the monitor. After all, I thought I was going to receive a copy of the monitor. Instead, I was quite surprised to receive an original of the Lausanne Congress signed by one of the participants in the long past year of 1875, Brother Gilles Duchesne, Grand Chancellor and Swiss representative in the Reverend Conclave. I offer a copy of this monitor to the distinguished consistory number 16 of Brasilia and another to the Brazilian Supreme Council in care of brother Claudio Roque Bueno Ferreira, Grand Secretary of International Relations. Brother Claudio sent an official letter of thanks from the Brazilian Supreme Council to its Belgian similar for the royal, this royal gift. 
Before I start to write this work, I ask uh, the brethren of Internet for help on the Lausanne Congress. I must, I must point out that I participate in many Masonic lists in the Internet at that time. First, a list guide brethren in the United States. Second, another in England. Third, in f a list in France. Four, and in Hispanic America, and so on. Besides this request that I asked from this list, I also sent messages to some brethren that are known to be expert in Masonic issues. One of them, Brother Nelson King, editor for the magazine Philolatis, told me the new nothing about he knew nothing about the subject. I realized then an interesting fact the Lausanne Congress is related to the Latin Masonry, Freemasonry, and it's totally unknown by the Anglo Saxon countries. I received this confirmation from a Chilean brother who was going through an apprenticeship in an American university. With this Belgian ammunition, I start from June to September in 1996 to write a piece of work that I will now make a summary for you. The first try and successful to create a union among the Supreme Council was the Alliance Treat closed in Paris on February 23rd, 1834, in which participate the Supreme Council of France, Belgium, Brazil, and the United Supreme Council of the Occidental Hemisphere, created by a mulatto of San Domingo, Count Room of Saint Laurent Council, which vanished afterward. The second try to intend an international union and organization foreseen and abort in 1834 was the convention that took place in Lausanne, in Switzerland, in the period of 8 to 20, 6 to 22 of September 1875, having as main objective the review and reform of the Grand Constitution of 1786 the definition and proclamation of principles and the elaboration of an alliance and solida solidarity treaty. Eleven Supreme Councils were present in this convention. England and Wales, Belgium, Cuba, Scotland, France, Greece, Hungary, Italy, Peru, Portugal, and the host, Switzerland. Scotland and Greece, which were represented by the same Scotland, Greece, which were uh, represented by the, the same brother, left before the event was over. Reason why only nine countries signed the final documents. The Supreme Councils of the United States, Southern jurisdiction. Argentina and Colombia gave their assent, but could not send representatives. The Chilean one sent a message stating that it would give its assent to this resolution of the conclave. After many working meetings in commission and 11 plenary sections, the conclave was over on September 22, 1875. The following items were the ones basically discussed first. A review of the Grand Constitution of 1786, taking off all reference to Frederick II, having as reference the Latin version considered as the fundamental documents of the ancient accept Scottish rite. B. The conclusion of a Union Alliance and Confederation Treaty of the Supreme Council. Third, C. The proclamation of a solemn manifest. Four, D. A right principle declaration from which the five first paragraphs were included in the Alliance Treaty. E. The adoption of a Scottish monitor, a two year, 
determined for each degree from the first to the 30, 33rd specification on the lodge decoration, the titles of the official, the signs of order, and acknowledgement, the tokens, the batteries, the acclamations, the marches, the symbolic aids, the sacred and password, the jewels, the trestle boards, the utensil, and so on. F, the presentation of a rule of the Supreme Council's regular analogy in the word. The United States, now the northern and southern jurisdiction, Costa Rica, England, Belgium, Canada, Chile, Cuba, Scotland, Colombia, France, Greece, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Mexico, Peru, Portugal, Argentina, Switzerland, Uruguay, and Venezuela. Brazil did not appear in the list, and according to Prober, uh, one of the one most important Brazilian historian, the Brazilian Supreme Council, in reality, one of the oldest in the world, was not included in the role of 22 analogous ones, probably as a punishment for not having participated. The record of proceeding of the 10th session make reference to the knowledge of Brazil. The convention recognized the existence of a Brazilian Supreme Council, but as there were two authorities wanting the title, the documents for both parts try to reach an agreement would be sent by the Swiss Supreme Council. On the contrary, the issue would be taken to the court created by the Article 7 of the Alliance Treaty so that it could be judged. A polemic point in the Lausanne Congress was the discussion about the grand architect of the universe that became the core of the misunderstanding that separate the French from the Anglo-Saxon Freemasonry. The third article of the Alliance and Confederation Treaty states that the Supreme Council would meet in a general convention in 1878 in Rome or in London and in every 10 years from that date on. However, as this Lausanne Convention was not legalized as it was forecasted only in 1900 as an initiative of the French Supreme Council that a new but very modest conclave got together in Paris. Again, the conclave that was supposed to get together in Brussels in 1902 started on June 10th, 1907. Therefore, 32 years, the Congress of Lausanne, with the pompous title of First International Conference of the Supreme Councils. Only after this conclave that regular meetings started to take place that were only interrupted by the two world wars and the second conference in Washington 1912, the third in Lausanne again, in 1922, the fourth in Paris in 1929, the fifth in Brussels in 1935, the sixth in Boston, September of 1939, the seventh in Havana in 1956, the eighth in Washington, 1961, the ninth in Brussels, 96-7, the tenth in Barranquilla in Colombia in 1970, the 11 in Indianapolis in the United States, 1975, the 12 in Paris, 1980, the 30th in Washington, 1985, the 4th in Mexico, the 5th in Lausanne in 1994, and the 16th in Rio de Janeiro in 2000. The seventh article of the referred treaty create a court composed of five 
Sovereign Grand Inspector General, active members of the five Supreme Council, with the competence to judge, in lowest court, difference that could come up among the Confederate Supreme Councils, saving the right of appeal to this confederation that would decide in higher court the right of appeal by majority of votes in the nearest conclave to take place. The five first councils were designed, but with time, that letter was left over. The United States was always against a confederation with the, Hilar with the argument that the confederation exists once in their country, and it took a bloody war to get rid out of it, and a Masonic Confederation would be welcome, wouldn't be welcome, due to the disgust the Americans have to this name. In the review text of the Grand Constitution, the Article II maintain the lifelong characteristic of the Supreme Council members, in other words, the Sovereign Grand Inspector General would be named ad vitam for life. The Article 3 limits in nine years the mandate periods for the duties they had been elected for. The Article 5 limited in 33 the numbers of active members of each Supreme Council on the world. The Article 10 states that none of the Sovereign Grand Inspector General would not be able to grant any Masonic degree, diplomas, or patent. The Article 11 annulled every consistorian council of Kadosh of the time. The degree 3rd, 31, and 32 could only be granted in the presence of three Sovereign Grand Inspector General. The Article 17 annulled the Articles 12, 13, and 14 of the Grand Constitution of 1786, which mean the Supreme Council would lo lose its sovereign authority over the Masonry due to the impossibility to exercise sovereign Masonic power that Frederick II had right to, and also the loss of the legit legitimate power to name a sovereign Grand Inspector General to establish a Supreme Council in the degree 33 in any, country, in any countries respecting the Grand Constitutional Prescripts. The revised version of the Grand Constitution of 1786, elaborated in Lausanne, were in reality folded by every Supreme Council, including the ones that didn't accept the referred conclave officially. It is important to mention that in 1880, the Supreme Councils of England and Belgium denounced the treaty. Brazil didn't know how to stand in relation to the Lausanne Congress, staying in a dubious and confusing position, sometimes accepting and sometimes refusing it, and its rights maintained according to the legend of Frederick II without any critical explanation, causing a confusion among the members of the philosophic degrees. The Lausanne Congress has to define the accept and ancient Scottish Rite principle, especially the fundamental symbol of the grand architect of the universe. There were two tendencies. One, the order tradition, spiritualist and Christian, against, second, the vision of the time, liberalist and scientific. There was a proposal to establish a commitment, as we can read about so much in the treaty, as well in the Declaration of Principles and in the Manifest. The continuation of the conclave 
began to complicate when in this section of the ninth day, the representative of the Supreme Council of Scotland and Greece, Brother McCarthy, proclaimed he had to go back to his country. On September 13th, he sent a note to the convention informing that he couldn't, in the name of the powers he represented, give, give his approval to the Declaration of Principle because the statement seemed little spiritualist to him, especially the definition reserved to the grand architect of the universe, supreme force, creator principle, expression that were not compatible with the faith in a personal God. Curious enough is the fact that the Supreme Council of England sent a circular letter on May 26, 1876, to its subordinate bodies, signed by these two representatives for the Lausanne Congress, with an admonition to the Scottish representative saying that if he had stayed until the end, he wouldn't have made such a declaration that the conclave used expression that did not go with the personal God. On the contrary, the same conclave must insist on was the one to put as an absolute and fundamental principle of the ancient accept Scottish rite the faith in the personality of God as the author, the creator, the supreme creator, the grand architect of the universe, the supreme being. In 1877, the Grand Orient France, GOF, suppressed for its lodge the obligation to work the glory of the Grand Architect of the Universe. And then he began of the schism that radically divided the French and English Masonic Mason, Masonries began. Even though the accept and ancient accept Scottish Rite always maintain its Christian affiliation and totally reject the innovation of the Grand Orient of France, we witness the Anglo-Saxon masonry that proposed a personal God for the Christians and for the Jews instead of an, of an impersonal creator, principle moving away. Regardless the radicalism of the Grand Orient of France, the Lausanne proposal was more like the Anderson of 1723 than one of the 1738. The modern tendency is prone to give reason to the proposal of Lausanne and of Alex Holm. It asserts that whether God is seen as a personal God or as a creator principle or, or force, is an individual choice, be of a person or of a group of people. Those who consider atheists the ones who bring God down to an impersonal creative principle, and here's where Pike stands. They shouldn't, in order to the coherence, since they accepted the fact the Buddhist can be initiated in the masonry, and as we know, the Buddhists were never prohibited to become Masons. The Grand Architect of the Universe discussion had a temporary conclusion in 1877. In the meeting in Edinburgh of the Supreme Council of Scotland, Greece, the United States, Southern Jurisdiction, Ireland, and Central America. Due to the French pondering, the latter council demanded that the interpretation given by the Supreme Council of England to the definition of the grand architect of the universe would have to be acknowledged by the group of Supreme Councils, Confe Supreme Confederate Councils in Lausanne. After an exchange of notes, the two groups, the Edinburgh one and the remaining ones, and under the conciliation pressure imposed by the Supreme Council of Switzerland. Everyone gave 
in the demands on the Edinburgh group in order to fulfill the unity of the ancient accept Scottish right. To summarize, Lausanne maintains the Christian tradition of the ancient accepted Scottish right in its various degrees, but in terms of principles goes toward a conciliating position between the deism and the theism. The main positive consequence of the conclave of Lausanne was the one that opened the periodical meeting of a great part of Supreme Council being called for them on confederances. The only Supreme Council that did not join this conference were those of England, Scotland, and Ireland in the Brussels Conference in, 18, in 1907. 20 Supreme Council participated, including the two jurisdictions of the United States and a series of agreements were accomplished due more to a pragmatic consensus than to the strength of a legal test. It was established the freedom each Supreme Council would have to adopt the revised version of the Constitution of 1786 as proposed in Lausanne. French version of a Lausanne were published mainly in Belgium However, there is a total ignorance of the conclave by the English-speaking country, with the exception of those comments made by Albert Pike about the discussion of the grand architect of the universe. In general, the United States Freemason has no knowledge whatsoever of the Lausanne conclave. The main points of the conclave were the review of the Constitution of 1786, generally accepted until today, and the proclamation of a creator principle called Grand Architect of the Universe. The creator principle is found up to today in the main documents of the Grand Orient of Brazil and of the Supreme Council. Another important point was that the conclave permitted that in all jurisdiction of the Scottish right to have identical constitution, despite the difference in rituals. The consensus was not established among the first three degree, red or blue degrees, and here the division was between the Latins and the Anglo-Saxons. The Latins wearing a red overall, and the Mason master and the Anglo-Saxon continue with those of their blue ones. Brazil has followed the Anglo-Saxon tendency, especially after the rupture of Bering in 1927, when he found the Grand State Lodge in Brazil. The Scottish Monitor to year it did in 1876 by the Swiss Supreme Council didn't have any compulsory characteristic, a unique document of the reference precise and complete make many and most of the time deep change in relation to the tradition of the Scottish degree. Needless to say, the monitor puts on the Masonica prawn of the Mason master in right scholar that is red. Another aspect of great importance was that the, the bodies present in the conclave following the deist, D with D, definition of the grand architect of the universe, more like a creator principle than a supreme being. They say that the motto, Ordo Ab Chao, was, the rain, was reinforced in Lausanne to simply express the relief of the representatives for their capacity to put some order in the chaos that was a constant before the ancient accept Scottish rite. The Latin American Mason, as well as the French, had a long persecution history from the Catholic Church and therefore were thirsty for a slight 
deistic requirement that would put them ready before the anti-clerical attitudes common in those times. From a South America point of view, the Lausanne Conclave represent a referent turning point. Since 1875, the ancient accept Scottish right, accept sincerely more liberal principles and performing the reforms that the status of our civilization was demanding, stopped being what it had be, been up to that point. That is a mystic association, mostly aristocratic and authoritarian, that labeling itself as Masonic, put their many time against the real principle supported by the real masonry. Lausanne represented, even it hasn't gone deep in Brazil yet, a true philosophical spirit that had come to substitute the existing shapeless mass of mystic religious doctrines and res resulting Templaric legends of all kinds that for a long time diverted the Masonic intelligence away from the true path of the real art. There is the, in the ancient and accepted Scottish rite a grand commander absolute and eternal anymore dictating absolute rules to be accomplished by a bunch of trained lambs. It is important now to make this liberation of blow start in Lausanne to keep on oxygenating the structure of the supreme council of the whole world. In this change of cultures, internet can be a powerful instrument to give a more participative sunrise sense of the ancient accepted Scottish rite. In the society in this 18th century was analogical, superstitious and religions, and our society more analytical, rationalist and agnostic in the eyes of Michel Brodsky, past master of Quattro Coronati Lodge. To our eyes, Lausanne is more toward the modern society than to the traditional one, because it start dismystifying the legend that Frederick II ruled the grand constitution of the ancient and accepted Scottish rite. It proposed a modern vision of the grand architect of the universe and search for certain unity in our constant diversity. Thank you for all.